Hi, my name is Brendan James, recording engineer. We're at my home here in Boulder, Colorado to talk about multi-track live drum tempo correction in Cubase 6. I've seen a couple tutorials around online that cover Cubase's automatic tempo detection tools and beat quantizing with multi-track drums, but these methods really haven't been useful for me uh, when dealing with recordings that were done live off of a click. What we have here is an older session uh, recorded back in 2008 at my studio, Abstract Rhythm, in Brooklyn, New York. As you can see, it's a Cubase SX project. This audio was extracted from a jam session with drummer Andrew McLean. The entirety of it was recorded off the click. All right, we have two objectives today. The first is to establish a custom tempo grid that will match the variations in BPM of Andrew's live playing. Using this custom grid, we can perform overdubs or other modifications to the track, and it'll be in our world in Cubase. The second is to take this to an entirely another level, and we're gonna use that grid to define warp tabs within the multi-track drum files so that we can conform his playing to a fixed grid. Uh, this would be more useful if you're going to take the track in a total electronic direction with loops and other more synthetic elements. So, first, let's get started and listen to what we have. I chose this track because of its complexity. Uh, what we have here is fast, jazz-influenced, uh, off-the-grid drumming. And um, back when this was recorded in 2008, uh, I really liked this part, but uh, there was much we could do to develop it farther um, because it's not on a grid. And uh, there's a lot of tempo fluctuations. Uh, there's a lot of good stuff here. And uh, first thing we're gonna do is uh, go up here, we're gonna save the project. Uh, Tempo correct. And that updates it to a Cubase 6.5 project. One of the newest features in Cubase 6 is the ability to link tracks together in group editing. Uh, so we're going to do that for the drum track. Now you'll notice that uh, when we move this around, uh, all the microphones stay together. Uh, when you're dealing with multi-tracked audio, it's really important to preserve the relationship of the different microphones because of their phasing. Uh, in drums, it's all about phase and how different microphones line up. So, first step here, we're going to try to find the downbeat of this part. Pretty obvious. Um, third beat in here. I'm gonna crop it right to the edge of that beat. And uh, we're going to turn on event snapping because I wanna preserve this uh, MIDI data with the drums. I wanna lock the start of this MIDI right to the start of the regions. Next step, we're gonna select everything and drag it back to the origin So everything's on the one. Uh, I'm going to dump this MIDI track down below, and uh, we'll deal with that later. We're going to now add a tempo track. And I'm going to fold that up to the top of the session. And we're going to activate that. Right now, the tempo is set to the arbitrary value of 120 BPM. Uh, that really has no relation to anything right now. I'll turn on the click and you can hear how things are out of time. So uh, here's where we started to find our custom grid using the time warp tool up at the top here. So what I'd like to do even before we start warping is uh, to get a better feel of the track and um, so we're just going to count it out 
One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, one. And um, one of the first patterns that I notice is that the snare is always on the two. Because he kind of pushes this groove, um, there's not really a hit point that we can latch onto on the downbeat. It's a, uh, it's actually a crash. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use these snare hits uh, to form my grid. So I'll remember that when I was counting, I was falling on the two. So it's gonna be the second beat of the measure. So right here, I'm gonna move this over to my first snare point. Same thing here. You can already see that these lines are starting to match up. Um, it's pretty important to have some sort of musical sense here when you do do this. It's also very important to be able to read the waveforms. Going back, let's take a listen with the click. And we're already starting to line up here. Uh, up top, you can see we're starting to define our custom tempo track. The next step is to move through the rest of this session and define all the, um, the tempo changes that he does as a live drummer. Um, I know I'll have some people out there that suggest that you use uh, Cubase's uh, tempo detection tool here. It's uh, not available because I'm in a group, but um, tempo detection in this type of material simply doesn't work. I can point that out by selecting the kick, we'll go through their uh, dialogue. The, um, the problem is there's just too much tempo changes. Uh, and this is something you come into quite often if you're not working with common genres um, or analyzing electronic house music. What you see here is that it gave up after a certain point. Um, and we start to lose beats. So I'm gonna stick with the tried and true method of uh, analyzing by hand. I'm gonna move through here and uh, I'll check in back with you after we work our way through this whole track. Okay, we're back here, and um, as you can see, we've developed our tempo grid up top. I have the inspector opened up on the side so you can see all the different values uh, that we entered in. Uh, this did take quite some time, uh, but as you know, the more time you spend uh, searching out and lining up your grid, the better the results are going to have when you start warping uh, new elements in. So let's take a listen here and uh, see how everything's lining up. So you can see that we're, uh, we're fitting in well here and um, the fluctuations up above uh, are basically holding the grid to, uh, to Andrew's playing. So now we can drop in our, um, our MIDI tracks as long as they're on the beat. We can loop. We can even add um, we can even add things from the media bay. And they're all gonna sync up with the playing because they're warping themselves to the grid. So this is cool. We can start to build on the song um, and we have accomplished our first goal. Uh, 
The next level that I was talking about at the beginning is conforming Andrew's playing to a fixed grid. Uh, and to do that, um, we're going to ensure that uh, each one of these audio files is set to musical mode. And you can set that here. Or you can actually go to the pool and set it up here. What I'd like to do uh, before I put everything in musical mode is bounce it. You do that under here, audio bounce selection. That's going to replace all the events. I just do that to be sh safe. And what it does is it actually locks this custom grid that we've done. It's going to lock that in as, um, as the definition for each file. So in the de definition here, we can zoom in and all these little points um, or what we created up here in our tempo track. Uh, you can go through and you can define each of these individually, but by doing it in the tempo track, it sets the definition for all the audio files in the session. This is very valuable. So now we're going to go to the pool window and we're going to set all of these drum files to musical mode. Um, I prefer to do it from this window just because it's a little faster than opening up everything one by one. It's also convenient to see in the window the warping algorithm that's being used. So right now everything is set to Elastic Pro. And um, so now that everything's in musical mode, it's still following along. I'll turn off that uh, conga track. And all we need to do is delete. Our, uh, our tempo track data. We'll set like a average tempo of around 114 and um, we'll see if it lines up here. So here we go, the tracks are being warped in real time to the click. And uh, this can be demonstrated by adjusting the value of the tempo track. And you can see that we have full control of the speed of the drums. So this is eight tracks of drums being warped simultaneously. Very cool. So now we're free to drop in our, uh, our MIDI data and everything. Let's bring that back up to a more acceptable tempo. And that's how you correct uh, live drums. Now that we're on the grid, we can uh, extract loops pretty easily here, duplicate things out. And it just makes working with audio a lot easier. Where's our conga player at? And uh, yeah, that's how we can start to develop uh, this track farther. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone for tuning in and watching, listening, uh, learning. If you have any comments, please leave them below. And we'll see you next time on the Brendan James audio tutorial. Adios.